Hey, I just found another toaster. <laughs> Guys, we just got out of Costco, got a full tank of gas. Let's take this thing down to LND Solutions. Guys, we made it. As much as the truck's making weird sounds, service engine line, all that stuff, we made it down to LND Solutions. Finally, guys. So I think at this point, we're just gonna unload the trailer. I just got out of LND Solutions. I got to see Russ. Uh, Dennis wasn't there. Um, his dad was there. Honestly, a really cool dad. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, I left the trailer over there. We detached. I'm literally just in the car at this point. And I'm hoping they can fix it on the trailer, get that thing to where everything's sorted. It will start, it will go into drive, it'll go into reverse because if you can go and drive it in reverse, we can finally start moving this thing inside the garage and that would just be so perfect. Wish me luck, guys. I'll get back to you guys when they get back to me. So uh, I'll see y'all soon. I appreciate it, my dude. Care, appreciate it. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Guys, we are back home and I am officially speechless. Check out this wiring right here. Check out that battery terminal. Don't don't worry about this cable right here, but just look at that. So yeah, guys, you guys saw that there's a wire on the car. We just got back from l &D Solutions. That wire that went from the positive cable to um, the switch that actually um, gives power to the hybrid battery um, was pretty much, we rigged it up. We rigged it up. There's no other way, honestly, unless we get all the airbags cleared, I think. Um, because I did a lot of research, Nick did a lot of research. I think the only way to get an i3 to start driving um, is to replace all the airbags. We're talking dash airbags, the knee airbags, the, the, the steering wheel airbags, the curtain airbags, the two airbag sensors. That's a lot of repairs before we can even get the car moving. So we just had to figure out a way to just rig it up. And God bless my boy Nick. So Nick has been the guy that's been here since day one on the channel. You guys saw him one time when he actually came to visit me. He's actually coming to visit me pretty soon. So you guys should be able to see him one more time and hopefully many more actually but yeah I reached out to him he's always happy to help and he actually figured out a way to actually rig the cable that the, the hybrid battery rigged a 12 volt right into it. it was very easy I'm gonna show you guys how to do it right now just kids guys ever get an i3 from auction and it doesn't run and drive this one wire that connects the two wires that's very easy to do will give you full power on the car you can run it and drive it now obviously um, I don't know if this is safe this isn't something that you know like I'm putting it out there if you guys are doing this you guys are doing this at your own risk I don't know if this is safe and uh, if anything happens, I mean, BMW clearly um, doesn't want the car driving unless everything's repaired. So there is a reason to it. So if anything happens to the car, you're doing this on your own risk. I want the car just to get it off the trailer and drive it on a trailer. That's the only reason why I want to get power to it. So for those of you guys who just want to get your car on and off a trailer and don't mind the risk, this is the way to do it. So I just pretty much got some regular BMW wire. You guys can pretty much get any old wire. I got a BMW wire and on this switch right here, this is what you press when you pull down on this switch, you pretty much deactivate the hybrid battery. When you push it in, you activate the hybrid battery. If this doesn't connect to this, then basically you shouldn't get any power to the car. And I still also think you have to place all the airbag stuff before you can even get power to the car. So again, all I did is I pretty much put a wire right on the positive terminal, right around the battery. I just twisted right around it, put it right on top of that, then just drag the wire and tapped it in to the first one right there. I don't know if you guys can see that right there, uh, but it's one, two, three, four, four wires on the top here, tapped it into the first one using a fuse tap from AutoZone. Very easy to do. I went ahead and just went with some extra wire just so it has some slack, but now, the car does start up. Let's go ahead and get it down the driveway and see if we can drive this thing up the driveway. Not believe we got the car on the driveway and we drove it up here god bless now we can literally focus on fixing all of this stuff on the driveway in an easy to access way i am so 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 happy honestly i just want to take a second to just say thank you to everyone that's involved in my life you guys support me so much and uh if it wasn't for you guys like nick was literally just one of those guys that watched my videos and i was helping me all the time so again just huge shout out to him because i don't think i could have even gotten this car to move and it would have took me another three hours to get it off the trailer if it wasn't for him so thank him so i just want to thank him so much all right anyways anyways i'll see you guys tomorrow morning i'm gonna go ahead and drop off the trailer and 
and hopefully we get to work on the i3. And guys, this is the next morning. We got the E92 M3 just chilling there looking hella beautiful. And then we have the BMW i3 that's been giving us a lot of issues. But you guys saw yesterday that we got the car running. Apparently the simple tap that you tap in a wire right here to the positive cable gets you full power to the car. And for example, like right now, I just want to move into the garage so we can install all the airbags. Now the nice thing about this car is that it actually doesn't need rivets for the current airbag. It's actually held down by screws and then tabs. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then you can pull the whole current airbag in there, slap in a new one. Um, we have the steering wheel airbag, uh, the passenger seat buckle, and then the two knee airbags. I wanna do, honestly, all the other airbags other than the current airbag first, just so we can actually move around because the steering wheel is blown up, the knee airbags are all blown up. I wanna be able to move around the car. Um, so let's go ahead and just knock out those three first. But to do that, we need to get the i3 in the garage. i3 is finally in the garage look how good this looks i mean this thing's actually huge guys honestly this thing looks like a ginormous car compared to the uh, e92 m3 but of course now before we actually get into any work with the airbags this is an electrical car we don't want to trigger anything so let's go ahead and just disconnect the negative terminal on here so everything is gravy in the navy now the first thing i want to get done guys is the steering wheel okay actually there's still power it says bmw the lights are still on so maybe i actually have to remove the positive cable as well uh let's do that all right, now that we got the positive and the negative disconnected, we should be good. Guys, I am so confused. How is there still power? <laughs> what? Okay, finally, now we're good. We've disconnected all the power stuff, so now we should be able to do it. That was actually a pain in the butt. That's probably the, the most pain in the butt airbag I've ever done. Uh, but basically, you don't go out it from the back. You remove the two things over here, and then you gotta just jab screwdrivers to pop these ridiculous tabs out of place. But uh, anyways, it worked out, so God bless. All the battery stuff is disconnected. Like, there is no power to the car, but for some reason, this car is scaring the baloney out of me. Please don't, my fingers, please don't fly off. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna kind of set this down, plug it in. Oh, God bless. Put that in there. Is that air? Oh, actually, this looks so good now. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay, that looks amazing. The horn works. Everything looks good on the steering wheel. So the next thing I want to knock out would be the current airbag, but I want to knock out these knee airbags first. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is getting really annoying. Uh, so let's try to knock out the driver's side first. And just like that, guys, we got both current airbags in there. We got the steering wheel airbag in there. The dash airbag, we'll have to get it when we actually replace the whole dashboard. Uh, but we have, uh, yeah, that's in the airbag, that's in the airbag, that's a steering wheel airbag. So we're doing so far so good. We just have one more seat buckle and one more airbag to go. Obviously, this is not gonna be any fun, removing the whole headliner. Um, but I do think it's actually be quite easier just because um, there's no like middle pillar that we have to remove. And plus, I think actually doing the seat belt looks pretty easy because it's just on one piece and it's we can open the door and work on it from outside the car. So since this is the passenger seatbelt, let's go ahead and go over there. Hopefully it's gonna be an easy install. And about 30 minutes later, guys, we have a functioning passenger seatbelt. The driver one still sees. I'm trying to find a good deal on the driver's side, but at least we knocked out this side. We got the two current airbags done. We got the steering wheel airbag done. This thing's really coming together. And 
we are at the end of the video, guys. I don't know why I keep saying curtain airbag down there. Those are knee airbags. I keep saying curtain airbags in the videos. I don't know what's going on with me, but it's knee airbags. You place both knee airbags. You place the steering wheel airbag. We place the dry, uh, the passenger seat buckle. We got the interior looking so much better. Now the curtain airbag. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I had no motivation to do it that night. I, I could throw a million excuses, uh, but uh, basically every single thing with the i3, I didn't know it was made in that way. Uh, but the, every single handle, everything you take off of the headliner um, are clips. And each one of those clips, if you break them, you have to buy a brand new handle, you have to buy a brand new sun visor. They're not held on by screws. It's super weird. That's also the current airbag itself is not held on by rivets, it's held on by these clips. And if you break them, you're kind of a little bit screwed over. So I had to do some research. I think I figured it out by now at this point. Um, there's not a lot of information online about it, but hopefully in the next video, we're really trying to knock that out or uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. But yeah, guys, I'm just so happy it's able to drive right now. I was thinking about the down the road, we want to get the framework done and get all the other stuff situated. We have to keep loading it on the trailer by yanking it on, yanking it off when we pull up to the place of the frame shop. It takes so much time to do that. We're talking like two, three hours every single time. And it is so frustrating every time we do it because especially the wheels were angled too. Now we got the wheels straight. Now we got the car uh, at least drivable as well. So now it should be a whole lot easier to get the car situated and hopefully finish on, like I would say, I'm not, we don't have like a schedule like on time or anything, but hopefully in a timely manner. But yeah, that's the update on the i3. As far as the M3 is doing right now, um, we're just waiting to get an alignment. Hopefully after the alignment, we're gonna fully assemble the whole front end and uh, get this thing ready to be sent out to SSR Performance. We're hopefully heading over to SSR Performance on the 21st. We're trying to get the raw bearings done and we're also gonna try to get the front end painted by SSR uh, Auto Body. So we're going to SSR Performance for the raw bearings and we're going to SSR Auto Body for the paint. And I am so stoked because their work is absolutely insane. Same. But in order to get it there, we need the car running and driving safe enough to get us down to LA. Normally, I wouldn't even risk it, guys. Normally, I would tow the car down there, but my truck, for some reason, it decided to blow a cat on me. So literally, the truck blew the cat, and right now, if I keep driving the truck, I think uh, the the, part, the pieces of the cap might get sucked into the motor and that would be catastrophic. Like we, we don't want to have a whole new engine replacement of V8 engine into my truck. The truck is not supposed to be a project, but it constantly is breaking down with a lot of towing. I guess it's a lot of strain on the car. It is an older truck. We did all the maintenance on it behind the scenes. We did the oil pan gasket. We did the transmission gasket, transmission filter, spark plugs, trans, uh, transmission fluid engine oil, um, oil filter housing gasket, valve cover gaskets, and now we're doing headers. We're not replacing it with cats because the original cats from B, uh, from Nissan is like garbage, so replacing it with upgraded headers um, because they're just welded better and hopefully there's not gonna be any issues in terms of uh, towing from here on out after that. Now in terms of smog, we're gonna have to figure that out. But anywho, I am currently experiencing a lot of headaches with my Nissan Titan, the i3, and the M3, but fingers crossed, boys, everything happens for a reason. And my end goal is, as long as we can get this M3 to LA, I'm a happy man, so. <laughs> I'll keep you guys posted, but without further ado, guys, that's gonna have to conclude this video. If you guys are excited to get some news on the M3, make sure to smash the like button. If you guys are excited to see the i3 come together, make sure to smash the like button. But without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.